this, in this talk, um, Gina and Peter, the founders of the Open Review Association, they are going to introduce the Open Street Map community to the technology that is available, and they are going to show how OSMB's project could benefit from an integration with Mango. Furthermore, they are introducing the nonprofit Open Reboot Association, ORA, who, are, who became the custodian of the mangrove technology and open data set. They are inviting anyone to join them as a member in order to save the direction of the project and help achieve its vision. Um, thank you. You can go to the session pad and add your questions. And after the live stream, we will answer all of them. Back to Dean and Peter. So hi everyone, my name is Dina Karabas and this is Peter Chaban. We are the founders of the Open Reviews Association and we are quite excited um, to share with you our vision today of uh, creating an open data ecosystem for reviews and uh, to invite the OpenStreetMap community to join this effort. So let's start with how it all came about. So. Uh, since a while ago, we have been using OpenStreetMap-based uh, applications like Windy Maps uh, for hiking or Osmond for navigation in the in the city, and um, also we have been contributing a bit uh, back to OpenStreetMap, trying to fill in any any missing bits. Um, but we noticed that any time we wanted to find, for instance, a a local restaurant. Uh, we had to go back to uh, services like uh, Google Maps that, that, um, uh, that made it easier to, to find, uh, for instance, restaurants uh, locally. And we thought about uh, how, could it, uh, how could we make it so that, so that uh, these uh, um, applications based, based on open data could also serve our needs in, in that case. And uh, we noticed that the main thing that, that was really missing uh, were reviews. Reviews that allowed these other services to provide us with the most relevant results and also, also see what may be interesting for us. And um, uh, then, of course, we, we started thinking also, uh, maybe, maybe we should start contributing reviews to these other platforms. But um, because they were proprietary and not as open, and and also we had to, we would have to give up our privacy to, for instance, Google or uh, TripAdvisor, uh, we thought it, it wasn't right. Uh, so so that's where the, the the idea to to think about open open reviews uh, came about. Yeah. So let's start by looking at some facts about reviews. So. As most of you um, might also know, they have gained quite a lot of importance in the last few years. And uh, depending on the survey and the research that you look at, uh, around four out of five people um, read reviews before they book a hotel online or before they choose a restaurant or buy some products. And furthermore, uh, more than half of these people also write reviews, whether this is for uh, because they had a very good experience or a very bad experience, or just because they want to share back and, and um, contribute their experiences back to, to, um, to other people. And finally, most people trust uh, reviews just much, much more than they trust any other information put out by the brands. And this is also what makes them so interesting and so valuable for people. And as these reviews have, been, uh, have become more, more important for people, they have equally become more important for the businesses as well and all the places that receive reviews. That can be local businesses, but also tourism boards or city governments. Nowadays, the economic success of businesses, but also cities uh, or touristic destinations really depends on, on their online reputation and what people say about them uh, on social media and especially in reviews. Then reviews are really important for the discoverability as well. Without reviews, you end up just very low on, on the lists displayed to people uh, or you are not shown at all. And finally, this data itself also carries a lot of opportunities, opportunities to improve services and products because the businesses receive direct feedback from their customers, what the customers like, how their um, uh, sentiments also change over time. And um, so this can help not only the businesses improve, but also all of us consumers to get better, better services and better products out there. 
Now, as the as they are becoming more important, um, it's also increasingly uh, problematic, in our opinion, that they are um, proprietary and that they are fragmented across several silos. So this is how we know reviews today. Uh, if we want to read them, then we have to go to either Google or TripAdvisor or Booking.com, uh, where we will typically find reviews. And, and also, these are the only places where we could also contribute reviews back. Now, for us as a uh, consumer, the issue is that, uh, as, as Peter has said before, on the one hand, we need to make constant choices. Where do we want to contribute uh, to? And um, uh, also, we will see that the, the, the ratings for a specific place differ quite a lot between the different platforms. So we also may have to make a choice there. Who do we trust more? Then for businesses, especially in the hospitality industry, um, the current situation has quite some inefficiencies in it and also increasing dependence for, for these um, businesses. So um, on the one hand, imagine that you have to do, uh, you have to manage your reputation across all these different platforms. That's um, quite a burden, especially if, uh, especially for smaller uh, places. Then um, furthermore, the businesses cannot use these reviews on their own websites. They cannot download them because they are proprietary to Google or Yelp or so. So if for some reason a business gets excluded from a platform, from Yelp, for example, um, then all the reputation that they have built up on that platform is just gone. And finally, in order to drive operational improvements that we mentioned before as opportunities, it would help these businesses quite a lot if they could analyze this data in a programmatic manner if they could download it in real time and analyze it across the platforms and uh, really see how maybe also improvement measures that they have started uh, actually translated into better reviews. And uh, right now in the current state, all this is not possible for, for businesses. So if we look at the next group, entrepreneurs and researchers, here we see that the current situation poses a lot of barriers for them. So as the data cannot be um, analyzed programmatically, um, there is not much innovation that can be done uh, unless you are one of these platforms. So if we think about um, new technologies, also applications of machine learning to build virtual assistants or recommender systems, um, all of these efforts are, quite, uh, are limited to those players that are already dominant. And uh, as people will use these services more, these um, platforms will be, become uh, even, more, even more dominant out there. And finally, also smart cities or the public in general. So uh, on the one hand, the reviews are open, so uh, are, are um, um, provided by consumers uh, freely and uh, free of charge to the platforms. But on the other hand, they cannot be used for, for the public. Um, so uh, if we think about uh, efforts of some cities to create um, new data-driven uh, services for their uh, citizens and to improve uh, potentially certain services, um, these valuable data uh, cannot be used for that. And finally, let's look at some problems around uh, applications in navigation and mapping. So here, as, as Peter has also mentioned in our own personal journey, uh, this was something that bothered us most uh, of all. Um, so we could not use our preferred applications in order to look up uh, a restaurant in a new town or a, a tourist attraction or, or um, a hotel because um, maps that don't have reviews uh, are uh, just not, not able at providing a useful ranking uh, of search results, uh, useful in the terms of uh, popularity or uh, uh, fitting our personal preferences. So without reviews, it's really hard for uh, new mapping applications or navigation apps um, uh, to create a real alternative to Google Maps and something that could really challenge the dominant players. So we thought a lot about how can we change the situation? How can we work towards something that uh, uh, is similar to what OpenStreetMap provides for maps, but in this area of reviews, of online customer reviews. And we thought um, um, about an architecture that could look something like this, what you can see here. So uh, we believe we can build an open data ecosystem around this data. And at the core of it would be the open data set, um, very similar to how OpenStreetMap is built as well. 
an open data set to which different individuals, but also companies can contribute. And um, so in this, in this um, 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 architecture, consumers would not have to choose anymore. So whether they use a mapping application that is part of the ecosystem, or whether they visit a, a hotel's website that is part of the, of the ecosystem, or a restaurant, or um, a city website, or a tourism association's website, if these websites and applications are part of the ecosystem, all their reviews will be stored in the same common and jointly shared data set. And it will be therefore also then available to entrepreneurs and researchers to, to innovate on it and to build new services. So in order to make this, this idea of an ecosystem work, uh, we started working on, uh, on two main components. So on one hand side, the technology infrastructure for open reviews. And on the other hand, uh, the, uh, the organization that would facilitate uh, work uh, of anyone that is interested uh, in this topic. So um, I will tell a bit more about the technology on the next slide. But we have, uh, we have developed the, uh, a standard for open reviews, as well as open API and um, a bunch of utilities around it and also a, uh, a web app that uh, allows anyone to read and write reviews. Uh, we have also worked uh, a bit on making sure that, uh, that open reviews uh, can be connected to other linked data. So, um, so right now we are working on exposing the open reviews in turtle format so that, um, so that, that works. And we have also uh, figured out the, the licensing around it, so the, the licensing for the data set itself and for any software that is developed around it. And um, the other important component is the, the association. So it's a Swiss registered association um, and it's meant to uh, support any efforts around open reviews and also be the custodian of the, of the data set and, and uh, any services that are run around it. Of, of course, anyone else uh, is able to, to host the data themselves, but, um, but the, foundation, the, the association will be uh, one such spot. Um, we, we also have a few different ideas for the, uh, for the uh, working groups that, that could be uh, working to contribute to open reviews. Um, so, so far it's uh, research, um, software development around the core infrastructure, uh, support in integration of open reviews into different services, uh, PR, and also uh, funding for open reviews initiatives. And in particular, the association is meant to be, be a vehicle for funding so that uh, um, if there are any projects uh, that require it, they can uh, ra raise the funding through the, through the association. So now let's have a look uh, uh, at, the, um, at the technology that, um, that we developed so far. So um, there is the open standard. Uh, it's based on a bunch of other existing uh, standards. You can check it out at mangrove.review slash standard. Um, it's designed in such a way so that uh, the reviews can be easily analyzed programmatically. And the data set has a high level of integrity and the reviews um, are as useful as possible to anyone uh, uh, leveraging them. Uh, then we have the API. Uh, it's an open API um, that makes it easy to submit reviews um, through, from any application and then retrieve reviews according to a number of different criteria. Um, on top of that API, there is a JavaScript library um, that is one possible way of uh, interacting with it. Um, but just this JavaScript library also introduces a new, uh, a, a new interesting identity solution that makes it easy uh, for users to leave reviews while preserving the, their privacy. So this is uh, great, especially if uh, a given application does not have any identity solution uh, yet in place. Uh, but of course, in, if, the, if the solution has it already in place, then, then reviews can be left with the, with the existing uh, login as well. Um, and then finally, the, the uh, re reviews, uh, in order to make sense of them, uh, 
there has to we there 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 are many different ways to try to make sense of them. So some reviews may be more relevant, some less. And uh, one particular way is to develop machine learning algorithms that will be able to go through the data and try to figure out which reviews are uh, more important or less. And so we developed one such uh, algorithm to uh, to get started on this path. And it's an uh, algorithm based on probabilistic uh, programming. And um, it's also available uh, on our GitLab. And um, uh, results of its computation are accessible through the through the API. So now in order to uh, to make it a bit more tangible and also make it possible to actually leave, leave your uh, first open and privacy uh, preserving review, you can check out the, the, uh, the web application that is available at mangrove.reviews. And um, it is meant to be a bit of a demo for the API and also the JavaScript library. Uh, but it, because it connects directly to the API, it's, uh, it's a reference uh, it's a reference um, place where, where one can access all the different reviews while each individual application integrating uh, with, um, with the data set can show a particular cut through the data. So now I will hand it over to Dina who will tell you a bit more about how you can get involved in the initiative and help um, uh, around spreading the word about uh, open reviews and uh, also uh, how you can um, make use of this technology alongside uh, OpenStreetMap. Yeah, so overall we think that there are several good reasons uh, for OpenStreetMap-based projects to look into this technology and to think about integrating it. Just to mention a few. So on the navigation and mapping side, you can um, uh, uh, surface much more relevant search results for users. Then furthermore, you can present users with more qualitative information that helps them to make better decisions. Then thinking about the points of interest, you can help those also to gather reviews, those that don't have them yet maybe, uh, and add value to them by that and potentially even monetize on, on, on such a data later. And furthermore, um, reviews can help, as we believe, to strengthen communities because they allow people to exchange experiences and insights with each other and they don't have to leave the platform in order to do so if they wish. And finally, we think that this might also be a good vehicle to increase diversity in the OpenStreetMap community because it might attract people that are not maybe so keen on just adding uh, factual data alone, but uh, uh, might be more willing to or more interested in, in adding qualitative data and photos. And uh, this might be an, a good entry point for them. But there are many other ways of how to um, contribute to this uh, initiative, if you wish so. So first to mention is the, the Open uh, Reviews Association itself. And here we invite everyone who is interested to become a member and to participate in the decision making and um, uh, uh, in the overall direction of the project. You can join any of the working groups or you can also participate in paid projects if we receive grants or uh, if we get commissioned work by integrators who, who want paid support. Um, but you can also just uh, add, contribute to the code base of the technology. So you can at any point in time discuss with us on our Riot chat if you think that there are missing features that should be added or just make a pull request directly to GitLab. There are a number of areas which might be interesting. So um, the standard, for instance, or the cryptography-based identity, um, the server, the APIs. And then if you have a project or if you have a, a website that could benefit from your reviews, you can, um, of course, integrate. Um, and contribute actual data back. Um, you can do that um, in, a, in different levels of integration and um, there will be always people uh, available to support it um, to different extents. And finally, we hope that this open reviews uh, ecosystem can be a fertile ground for new businesses to be created. So if you are an entrepreneur or a researcher, uh, we hope that this can contribute to, to new ideas. So be that uh, around building new applications or products for the ecosystem, such as 
proof of purchase verification or solutions that help to mirror um, reviews that are in the open data set into uh, proprietary services so that people are not disadvantaged as long as um, we haven't reached a critical mass yet. Or uh, by offering new services such as reputation management or consulting to those uh, that join the ecosystem. Yeah, so we are coming to an end of our presentation. Thank you very much. We uh, hope that we could share our excitement for this topic and spark some interest um, to bring more open data to the world. Um, yeah, uh, visit uh, mangrove.reviews, leave your first review uh, in the open data set, chat with us on our Riot chat um, or spread the word on social media. And um, yeah, now we look forward to the Q&A with you. Thanks a lot. Thank you guys for the um, presentation. It's really helpful. Um, you have a lot of questions. Just let's just pray you'll be able to answer all of them. Um, so do you want me to read three, the first three questions, and then you answer them and then come back? Is that OK with you? Um, we can also go and clarify some of the questions, because uh, quite a few are around the same topics. So if, if you like, you can also just go through some groups. Looks like Andy um, is. So do you want me to read three, the first three textiles, and then you answer them, and then come back? Is that okay with you? Um, we can also go and ask questions because uh, quite a few are around the same topics. Like this one also. Okay, so you can go ahead. Um, I think um one of the questions is all about you know the review of the app. Um, it says, how can I add review to, to my app? Has anyone built an app next to Mangrove reviews or is it their list? Um, the other one is, what existing open content review system do you examine before starting this one? Why are they not adequate? So um, another one is about the reliability of data and um, pseudonymous users. Um, you want to answer those first? Yep. Yeah. Let us go. Um, I think. Yeah, yeah, maybe mute yourself. Yeah, or at least mute maybe a stream on your side. Otherwise, okay. I think it's. Ah, oh, yeah, great. So, um, so yeah, th thanks a lot for uh, for all the questions. Uh, yes. There is a bunch of them. So, um, so there is there is a, a few different topics. So the first one around the reliability. So the f first question, how can you guarantee reliability of data with pseudonymous users? And that's related to dispute resolution potentially and uh, jerks writing reviews. And um, so let's uh, let's go through it. So uh, generally um, every review platform has uh, um, issues with, with, uh, with uh, uh, fake reviews or inaccurate reviews. And um, and a lot of platforms struggle it, with it a lot. So so um, I think this is this this is the case for for every platform. And there is there is different ways though how how uh, we can handle it. And so so on one hand side we can we can try to make sure that the data that comes into the um, th that comes into the platform is somehow uh, more. Uh, um, uh, we can we can figure it, figure out from it if the data is reliable and the other thing is we can do certain uh, data analysis on the data as it comes in in order to to uh, figure out if uh, if it's reliable so on the kind of uh, input points there there is different things so for instance the existing platforms oftentimes you need to uh, log in with your uh, with your existing login solution and that provides a bit of um, barrier for anyone that wants to spam, for instance, the service. There are some platforms that even include with a, a basically uh, as part of the review, uh, you somehow confirm that you made a purchase. So, so for instance, on booking.com, if you review a particular hotel, they check if you actually um, uh, booked it through the platform. 
So with open reviews, we could try to do similar things. So we could try to, um, for instance, allow easy creation of, of kind of a token that, that people can attach to their review. Or for instance, if someone leaves a receipt together with their review, um, that can help to people to determine if this review is reliable or not. But then that's the first step in terms of the data that comes in. But then the other very important step is looking at the data itself. So there is a lot of um, really interesting um, uh, machine learning techniques and statistical techniques that allow you to see if, for instance, a given user came, uh, uh, a given identity came into the platform and only left a few very high and very low reviews that didn't correspond in any way to the uh, to the underlying quality of the place. Uh, and, and then that can flag these reviews up as slightly less reliable. But if someone for a, a with many reviews leaves reviews that are aligned with, with how others see the quality of the different places, then uh, th their reviews are more likely to be reliable on new places that haven't been reviewed yet. So, uh, so we, um, on the on that analytic side, uh, we uh, I mentioned this aggregator algorithm. So it's a kind of a, a probabilistic uh, algorithm to try to make sense of the of the data that comes in. And we plan to continue developing it. And of course, because it's open source and the data is open source, we hope researchers to help us along the way. And then there is this other part that we didn't tackle yet. How do we, for instance, improve uh, the data that comes in? So attaching any proof of purchase and things like that. So so far. We, uh, we 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 at, we attach, for instance, um, pictures of uh, of receipt into some of the reviews, but but uh, there is definitely more ideas there around even some cryptographic schemes uh, around it. Um, Maybe also yeah. to mention, uh, we uh, also uh, hope that the community itself uh, plays an important role in ensuring reliability. So. Uh, Everyone reading reviews can uh, either uh, comment on there. So th there are basically two uh, or three buttons that a person can uh, can click there. So one is um, if you have made the same experience, if you have been at the same hotel or restaurant, you can say you can click I confirm this experience if it matches your own. Then another uh, possibility to um, add a qualification to the review is to say whether it is a helpful review or not. So, so that button does not rely on you having made the same experience. Um, it's just uh, asking whether, um, yeah, it's, it's a useful, it's a good piece of information uh, to make better decisions. And then the third, the third way of interacting with reviews is just to flag them to flag them as inappropriate. And in the terms uh, of service, we have defined what, what inappropriateness is. Um, and those that are flagged as inappropriate will then indeed be read by, by humans, by, by the people um, uh, responsible for that, um, and then mm -hmm. can be uh, moved to another data set. And uh, one can also reach. comment. So, so basically uh, yeah. all these functionalities are implemented in the kind of tech, on the technology side as just reviews of reviews. So, um, so, uh, so, uh, um, that all the same kind of rich functionality related to reviews can be related to the reviews themselves. And, but, um, for, for, uh, related to what Dina mentioned and, and related to the question six about arbitration, uh, and disputes. So generally, we don't plan to filter reviews um, in any way unless they are really uh, violating the uh, violating the terms of service. So uh, unless they are really kind of out there and inappropriate. Yeah, hate speech um, and so on. Uh, but but otherwise, we plan to leave all, all reviews in place and and uh, and uh, and rather allow these uh, these different methodologies these different algorithms that act on top of the data set to try to make sense of it so rather make the data set as comprehensive as possible um and and then rely on on methods on top of that so on top of that of course there can be manual moderation techniques uh, can be kind of more algorithmic methods and different methods yeah. of that sort but uh um, in, and in terms of uh, removal of the content, we pr will plan to also not uh, kind of remove it and hide it from everyone, but clearly have a section uh, within the data set that has to be separately retrieved uh, with all the deleted reviews and a clear justification to what what point of the of the terms uh, they refer to. So we answered, I think, number one and number six. Um, um, so number 
Number five is asking, how do you handle the lack of stable unique identifier in OSM? Um, he sent a link, and the other one that is um, link is, does the central open ORV identifier provide app for Android exist? I don't know how Android accounting certain integration work, but it's not a thing already. I've excited to at least look into it. Um, some of them are just comments. What type of things are up for reviews? And see where can I find more information online about open reviews associations? Yeah. Take it away. I think the one yeah. about the identifiers is quite interesting. Um, and also the one about other apps that um, uh, other re review apps. Yeah. So let's. Uh, so which ones? Other uh, identifiers? Yes, the other review systems. Okay. So um, which? So one one I think question three is maybe good because it's a kind of a maybe a basic uh, question yeah. that one might ask. So what what other existing open review um, systems did we examine? So indeed uh, we looked at both of the so both of the ones that are mentioned here, lib reviews and uh, place re open place reviews. So that was a project by. Um, the the Osmond uh, guy. So, um, uh, so in both, in, uh, we didn't see really any other uh, kind of bigger uh, open reviews efforts or any uh, any really. But uh, unless they are application specific, so we didn't see any kind of generic uh, reviews platforms. So in terms of both of these projects, we reached out to them when we were starting uh, out uh, our work. So um, in terms of uh, lib reviews. Uh, um, yeah, it's a it's a, a quite a nice uh, project. It it has a slightly different focus, so it's um, uh, it's more focused currently on on a curated community and long form content. Um, and uh, certainly, we're thinking of of even for instance, um, as as libre as reviews are left within lib reviews, maybe adding a kind of a a kind of a review that links back to lib reviews uh, uh, in mangrove data set or in open reviews uh, data set. So, that, um, uh, so that if people want to read kind of more of a blog post style review, then they can go to lib reviews uh, while, um, uh, while mangrove um, reviews remain kind of more uh, um, kind of similar style reviews to maybe existing reviews that you see on, on review platforms uh, out uh, there and a bit more structured in terms of their format. So lib reviews are also more free form in terms of uh, how they are uh, 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 formatted. But there is definitely it's an interesting project and um, uh, and and the reviews in this in their case only refer to URLs, which obviously you can make URLs refer to pretty much anything. But uh, but they can become application specific. So for instance, for Place for places we use geo URI, which is basically coordinates and name of the place, and that's a, a fairly generic. Um, um, yeah, so that's a fairly generic uh, format that allows across applications to use it. In terms of open place reviews, so someone else already mentioned below that open place review. So we looked at it at the beginning. Uh, the uh, so it looked like a great project, and we wanted to actually work together, but the team wasn't so interested at that point to work together. And also uh, we looked at the technology and it used some, um, they are trying to build out uh, their own blockchain uh, solution. And so there was quite a lot of moving pieces while our focus to, was to build something a bit more uh, simple and uh, streamlined. So, um, and by now uh, also the, uh, from the conversations in their telegram, um, they mentioned that they, were, they, they are not actively working on the project anymore. So. Uh, so it seems like um, it's unfortunately not going anymore. But we are still keen to for a conversation and maybe uh, further co collaboration. So maybe I will go a bit quicker through a few. Yeah. Um, where can um, sorry, them? I'm afraid that's, that's the time we have. So um, at your own time, you can read and connect with them um, during the small talks. And you can find some of them um, online or other streams so that we have to prepare for another session. Thank you so much. This was so insightful and useful. Thank okay. you. Thank one, you very much. One place you can drop in. So uh, if you go to uh, open place, uh, uh, the openreviews.net. Open-reviews.net? Uh, open yeah, that's in the, in the pad. 
uh, you can drop in into the Riot chat. So that's a good place for kind of asynchronous uh, uh, question asking uh, session. So uh, we could even paste the questions over yeah. there and answer, or we'll try to do it in the pad as well. Super. Thank you very much. Thanks. So that, that will work. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.